Hey there, Andre here from PSD Box. Thanks for joining me on a new Photoshop tutorial. Today I have, uh, have something really cool for, uh, for you. I want to show you how to create realistic shadows in Photoshop using the 3D features. Uh, it's a cool trick that I'm sure you're gonna love it. So let's head over to Photoshop and let's get started. This is the final result of this. Um, let me show you the this is the shadow that I want to show you how to create using the 3D features of Photoshop. You can download these images from my website, you'll find the links on the video description. Uh, this is a picture I took in, in Madrid and this one is from unsplash.com. Well, this was the original image, I deleted the background and uh, I wanted to create a shadow uh, and I used this one as guide. Okay, so. Uh, this is the result that I got. Now usually what I would do is, uh, and I did this in many of my tutorials, is I would create a copy, uh, apply the layer mask, uh, flip it vertically maybe, and then use the hue saturation to drop the lightness, and then use uh, with Control T, use the distort option and just uh, distort my shadow and just place it here on the ground. Now this technique is okay, it works in many cases, but there are some times when this technique is not working, depending where the light is coming from. If you have, especially if you have uh, light coming from the sides, uh, this technique not, might work, might not work um, really well. So I'm going to show you a trick on how to do it more realistically. So what you would do is, let me delete the original one that I created. What you would do is, well, extract the background of your object or model, whatever, and I'm going to create the copy with Control Command J. Now, it's important to apply the layer mask, so right click and choose Apply Layer Mask. And now uh, we're going to use the 3D features of Photoshop. Now, if you have, if you don't have a version that has 3D, you will not be able to do this. So this is just for um, users that have a Photoshop version with 3D features. Now, I'm going to right click on this layer, which will be my shadow and I'm gonna choose new 3D extrusion from selected layer. And the reason why I'm doing this is, is, is because now I'm going to the 3D workspace and by default you would see the, let's show the ground plane. Uh, here is important to uh, match this plane, this mesh here, this grid to your actual perspective. In this case it matches pretty much perfectly without doing anything, but if it's not matching, just use this control C on the bottom to just um, move this higher or lower, but uh, it's important to uh, keep this um, after you change the perspective, it's important to uh, make, well, to actually um, make sure that these are what is one on top of the other, uh, because otherwise the shadow will not look right. So let's undo that, because in my case, uh, this fits perfectly. The ground plane with my perspective. And now I'm going to view, show, and I'm gonna deactivate the ground plane because I don't need it. Now, let's go to the 3D tab. Uh, by default, it switches to 3D here on the workspace. And layer one, copy, this is the name of my uh, layer. Uh, this is the 3D object. Now, when you select that, you will see that the extrude, you can see the extrusion depth here. It's too much, um, about four or five pixels is enough for this canvas size. And after you do that, just click that, press enter, and you can see here on the top, um, on the top left, you can see the amount. You can see that the shadow is already created, and that's because uh, by default, Photoshop creates an infinite light. And if you just click on that infinite light and start moving this around, you can see how the shadow changes. And because the ground plane is matching my perspective, the perspective of my photograph, uh, looks like this shadow is sitting on the ground. And now I can move this however I want and try to match these shadows that we already have on the image. Now, when you select the infinite light, you can increase the intensity. And by increasing the intensity of the light, you will also increase the intensity of the shadow. Look it right over there. You can see that it's compared to this one, it's too transparent. We're gonna fix that in just a second. Let's first match the angle and pretty much there I would say, I will leave it there. And one thing that we don't need is, you can see on the layers, I have this underneath my photo. This is a 3D object is underneath the photo. We don't need the shape, we only need the shadow. So select the 3D object and right click on it, on the canvas itself and choose invisible. And that will make the shape disappear and we only have the shadow here. Let's reactivate our photograph. 
Make sure you don't move them, otherwise the shadow will move and it's not going to look realistic. Let's select the 3D object and go back to the 3D. And here, now we have to match the transparency and the color. Let's choose environment. And from here, let's. I'm going to deactivate the IBL because I don't like to see this um, light here. Uh, this is for reflections. Uh, I'm going to deactivate it, we don't need it. And here we can choose the shadow, uh, the color of the shadow from here and I can choose whatever color I want and what I'm gonna do is sample the color from my shadow over here that we already have on the image and you can see this color is the same that I have there I'm gonna click OK and now I'm gonna increase the opacity of this about there probably the color I'm gonna make it darker like that and it's better to have it a bit more opaque than the original because uh, after we rasterize this, we can drop the opacity of the layer if we need it. Now, uh, you can also change, I forgot to mention it, here on infinite light. If your shadow is blurred, or if it's more, yeah, if it's blurred, you can change the uh, softness right here. Um, if you increase this, you can soften this. Now, the edges are not right because we have to render this, but uh, I'm going to leave it to 1% here. So once you're done with this, um, here on the environment, you've set the color and the opacity and, uh, and all of that, you can go here to the layers tab. And if you just want this low quality uh, shadow, you can right click and choose rasterize, th uh, rasterize 3D. Or if you want a more higher quality shadow, you can choose render 3D layer. I'm gonna choose render 3D. This will gonna take a while, about 10 minutes or something like that. It depends on the canvas size as well, and it depends also on how soft you made the shadow. Uh, Photoshop will start to render this, and here on the bottom left you will see uh, 16 minutes. It's gonna drop to about four or five minutes uh, in this case. I'm gonna let it render, and I'm gonna show the final result after we're done. Okay, render complete. Let me zoom in so you can see how uh, now the edges are a lot smoother. And what you need to do now is right click and choose Rasterize 3D. And our shadow is ready. This is how I created this shadow using 3D features in Photoshop. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this tutorial. This is how you can create uh, 3D shadows in Photoshop. Uh, if you liked it, just pay with a like and other people can find my channel thanks to your, uh, to your likes. So that's all for today. I hope you liked it and I hope you join me on the next tutorial. Subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every week and that's all for today. See you next time.